Hey everybody, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today I have a fun polymer clay fall tree mixed media panel. It's the first time I've tried something like this and it's for the hashtag love fall art collaboration uh, with YouTube artists. I hope you enjoy this project. When I started this I planned to use an 8x8 size and I've just sketched out a tree, uh, my fall tree, and you can see that I've just got it here on um, on a piece of paper to match the size of the canvas and I'm using one of these uh, canvas panels. It's 8x8, but I want you to really stay tuned because you'll see that that turned out to be a disaster. Uh, I'm using a lot of um, scrap polymer clay that I have, and I'm just taking it out of my scrap bin, and this is just a series of browns and tans. I've got dark and light, and I'm going to go ahead and take those out and start to form some logs out of them. And I'm really just taking whatever I got in the scrap bin. I'm not opening new clay. Um, just taking what I've got and trying to use all of that scrap up. I'll take this and I'll start to um, form it up and start to condition it with my hands, just forming logs um, until I get them all combined. And I do have to kind of work this a little bit because a lot of this clay is pretty old. It's been sitting in my bin for a while. So you can see I've got it conditioned and I'm rolling it out and just forming uh, three logs and I'll just uh, take those logs and and twist them together because I really want a sort of a variegated uh, look for the tree trunk. So I'll get that um, kind of shaped up. And I'll use my acrylic rod just to get it uh, flattened down enough so that I can get it rolled out through my pasta machine. And uh, I've rolled it out and I'm just using the, the hand-drawn um, picture just to make sure I have enough clay. And I'll just keep rolling it through the pasta machine until I get a gradation and a variation that I like. And you can see I'm going to pretty much use this, um, this, this one, this sheet of clay. I, um, I went ahead and cut the tree out just so I could get a, uh, make sure that I was good with my proportions. So I've cut, uh, cut the sample out and then I'll start to cut the clay. So here's the sheets and I'm just going to use that to start to cut the clay. I'm just going to do the first sort of cut um, to get a, uh, keep with the, say, the size and the scale. Um, but after that I'll just freeform it. I'm going to pre-bake the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and place it on the panel. But I do want you to kind of see what's coming up because I had a little bit of a studio disaster. But I'm just lightly placing the tree on the panel. And then I'll start to cut uh, some of the other branches from the other scrap clay that I've got. And I'm using the raw edge of the clay just because I like the texture. So you can see I'm just freeforming uh, free the branches there and I'll just place them uh, in a way that I, I like the way that that looks. And again, I'm not really adhering it to the board. I'm just placing it on there because I, I wanna cure this uh, before I add the sky and the um, and the ground, the leaves and the grass, because I want to have the clay hard so that I have a little bit that I can butt um, the the other raw clay up against. So I go ahead and uh, cut the pieces um, for the branches until I get a design that I'm happy with. And um, my plan was to get this in the oven, cure it, bring it back out, and then start to apply the rest of um, the rest of the clay. But um, you can see, once I get this back out, that it did not turn out the way I hoped for. What I'm going to do while that's curing is I'm going to mix up the sky. And just like I did with the tree trunk, I'm just taking lots of different colors of blue and grays and a little bit of purple and um, white and mixing them so that I can make um, a sky that I think is pretty and I'm going for a kind of a overcast kind of cloudy look uh, to the sky so I don't want it you know to be bright blue uh, so I want to have a lot of different colors so I'm just adding bits and pieces from my scrap pile and I will work that into a sheet um, once I get a log, I will roll it out a little bit to flatten it so it can go through the pasta machine easily. You don't want to jam up your pasta machine by putting clay that's uh, a sheet of clay that's too thick. So I do make sure that I've got it um, really well 
flattened before I stick it into my pasta machine just so I can preserve the life of my machine. I've put it through a couple of times and you can see how it's starting to uh, get a little bit of a gradation and the colors are starting to mix together. You can choose whichever side you like um, because you'll get a different pattern on each side. I'm going to go ahead and put this through the pasta machine at least a couple more times until I get a pattern that I really like. Another time through. And I'm starting to get there. Um, I'm liking the way, starting to like the way that this turns out, but I want to get it through one more time. And I'm ending up now with a piece that I really uh, like, and it gives me the colors. Now I'm moving on to making the ground. And all of this is while I have my tree trunk in the oven curing. So I'm taking some orange for to represent the fallen leaves, and yellow, and green. Um, uh, some reds and all of the colors of fall that you'd expect and just like the other sheets I'll just continue to roll it until I get a pattern that I like and I'm really liking the way that this looks that looks like fallen leaves to me and a little bit of green grass so there's my sky and my uh, my leaves now this is the disaster that occurred I put that canvas panel board in the oven and look what happened it really puffed up and it's still hot it's exactly out of the oven you can see my my um, tree is breaking up and I just I'm just so disappointed by this I have such a disaster and it's still really hot so I'm fiddling around to try to see if I can save what I've done with the tree and I'll take my blade and just kind of lift that up and it, it's all breaking apart but you know I'm not giving up I gotta I'm gonna try to find a way to save this um, so I've taken it off and I'll put the pieces together just like a puzzle and uh, try to let this cool. It's still really hot. Um, so I'm going to get it um, positioned and get the pieces together. And uh, <clears throat> it, does, it is kind of um, a little bit um, bubbly and misshapen um, because of the way it came off the panel. So I'll take some of my glass tiles and I'll um, set them on top just so it'll flatten it out while this cools and I'll let that cool. So here's the second board because my first panel didn't work out. This is just a little masonite board. And um, it's a different size even. I think this one is like six and a half by nine. And I'm just going to go ahead and use it. i got to make it work. This stuff happens in the studio all the time. So I'm applying some weld bond, which I'm really liking the adhesion, and just make sure that's on there. And then again, with my puzzle pieces, I'll just go ahead and get my tree back on and position it in a way um, th that it seems to fit well on the panel. The, and it's a different size of panel, so you'll see that I'm going to have to do a little bit of tweaking uh, to make sure that the, the tree is proportioned well. So these are the little pieces from my original that I'm gluing on and um, uh, just uh, getting them applied. Um, the weld bond will secure them. Okay, and this is pretty much the last of the pieces that I had on my original design. Um, when I look at this, though, I didn't really think it looked complete enough, so I'm going to create some additional branches from some raw clay. And uh, I've got the weld bun on there, so it should hold the, the raw clay well. And I'm just freehanding um, some branches and getting those stuck on there um, so that uh, I can form the, the branches of the new tree. And I'll get those all situated and um, just till I have a design that I like and I'm pressing the raw clay up against the baked clay uh, to just um, disguise any of the, uh, the cracks and I'll cut off any excess that I have there. Now I'm going to start to apply the sky and I'm just taking the sheet of clay and I'm freehanding cutting pieces to fit in and it's going to go in kind of like a mosaic. So I'm paying attention to how the, the sky is aligned and I'm just going to start to fill in all the different pieces with clay. 
any gaps that I have, I'll just take a little bit of extra clay and continue to fill it in until it's all, um, the sky's complete. You can see that it's kind of helpful to have that tree baked uh, because you have a little bit of resistance when you put the raw clay up against it. So it makes, um, it makes it a little bit easier. If this were all raw clay, it might get a little bit mushy and you might tend to lose some of the design. Now that I've got my sky on, I'll just clean up any of the edges. And then I've decided I want a little texture, so I've got a little um, plate here and I'm just taking my acrylic rod and running it over the sky. Now I'm going to put that really cool um, grass and leaves uh, sheet of clay that I've got, add a little bit of extra weld bond to make sure that I have a good, um, a good grip on the clay. And once I've got all of the weld bond on there, I'll go ahead and start to apply my sheet of clay. So I'm actually going to apply this in a couple of layers, and this is just the first layer. And you can see I'm overlapping the sky just a little bit and uh, pressing it down. And then I'll just tear it off um, or cut it off as I need to. And um, fill in all of the, the sections where I want the ground to be. And I'll just keep filling that in until I have a look that I, I like. And I'll overlap the tree trunk just a little bit to uh, give the appearance that it's um, sitting in a lawn. And uh, continue to put um, the bank of leaves and the, and the grass around the tree trunk. I just really love the way that this um, orange and green clay sheet turned out. I thought it looked really cool. You have limitless um, possibilities on how you put this together because you your sheet of clay is unique for every single time that you make one of these or you do one of these sort of um, mosaic type um, applications and you have free reign to, to finish this however you like. And I'll just use the clay sheets that I have to give a pattern that I like and to sort of give the appearance of, of the fall leaves on, a, on the lawn. Again, I'm texturing the bottom with a little different texture sheet uh, because I am going to antique this at the end. And then before I put this in the oven to cure, I will uh, clean up all of the edges. Now, I decided that the tree looked a little bare um, since the leaves are falling. I decided to take a little bit of that clay, that um, leaf colored clay, and apply a bit of it to um, the branches. And really, it's just um, to give a little bit of color and the the illusion that there are still a little bit of leaves on the tree. And I'm applying it fairly sparingly. I'm taking one of my tools and I'm just putting a little bit of texture to give the appearance of leaves. Just put a little bit of divots. And I'll go ahead and cover this and get this in the oven. Now I've decided that I wanted to antique this so that I could get um, a highlight here. And I'll tell you honestly, I think I put a little too much on here. But at any rate, I um, covered it with a bird umber paint. And now I'm just taking a rough uh, sandpaper. This is probably about 320 grit. And I'm going to take all of that extra off. And you can see the finished piece, how it highlighted um, the texture that I'd put on. And I, I thought it turned out pretty good for my first piece. So uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.